In other words, all our situations, God can attend to them. But he doesn't attend them according to our wishes. He attends to them according to his plans. Christ is on the cross and he is saying, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabakithani. When you hear someone speak their mother tongue, they are in trouble. Forsaken me. So God has also suffered. So suffering is not reserved for sinners. We are limited. We may not know. We may talk about what should have been done and uh, many other things. But as people of God, we are glad to surrender these parents to the Lord and the whole matter to the Lord. We are glad to surrender it because he has never disappointed even in spite of that pain. After the crucifixion of Jesus, the family was consoled. Tukiwa tumeketi, tutasoma somo retura kwanza from the book of Isaiah 55 from verses 6, 6 to 13. Behold, behold, you shall call a nation that you do not, you do not know. Sorry. Behold, I, behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know. And a nation that did not know, you shall learn to you. Because of the Lord, you are God, and of the Holy One of the Israel. For he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the, to the Lord, that he may not have compassion on him, and to our God, for he will uh, abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow cometh down from, the earth, from, from heaven, and, it, and it do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower, and bled to the, to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose. And I shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountain and the hills before you shall break forth into singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hearts. Instead of the thorn shall come up the surplus. Instead of the briar shall come up the mito. And it shall make, make a name for the Lord. Uh, a fasting sign that shall not be cut out. That's the word of God. Lord, uh, my name is Mary Odoni Ngonjiri, PCEA in Darasha Parish. We are going to get our second reading from the book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 18 to 20. Luke chapter 7, 18 to 23. Let us read together. The disciples of John reported all th these things to him, and John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to the Lord, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And when the men 
had come to him, they said, John the Baptist, are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? In that hour, he healed many people of And he answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind received their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, the poor have good news preached to them, and blessed is the one who is not offended by me. That's the word of the Lord. Nashukua nafasi hii kuwasalimu nyote katika jina la Yesu Bwana asifiwe God is good all the time and that is his nature wow i have been introduced by bishop paul wajohi my name is Dego Mutahi Christ is Lord and Savior of my life i am thankful to him for his care for his protection and many provisions upon me and all of us. It's a sad day that we are assembled here, 21 caskets before us, and even more painful because these are young children who we imagined when they were born they would bury us. The parents, I'm sure, because all of, all of us look forward to a time we will die, we are all candidates of death once we are born. But our prayer is that children will bury their parents. However, God in his own way has decided we should bury our children, our very tender-aged children. And therefore, it's not an easy day, but then the same God is so gracious that he comforts us even in times like this. I bring the condolences of the Presbyterian Church of East Africa the proprietor of the school and a number of children belong to our church. However, our condolences go to all the families that are affected by, the, uh, by the, these untimely death. Therefore, we start with you in prayer, just as we told you when we came at Edalasha on the 8th of September. The Lord knows how to deal with situations like this. We human beings have no idea how to deal with such grief. If one death is painful enough, how do you deal with 21 of young people? But God, in his own grace, knows how to attend to us. And that's why we are speaking his counsel in times like now. So we want to thank the Fraternity of Kraje in Yeri County because they have worked with the families and they have and about them to be strong to date. We also thank the leadership of this country, the national government, today represented very well by the Deputy President, Honorable Legadi Gashagwa. And I also see other leaders. I see the wiper leader here and others. I also see the county leadership, Governor Mutahi Kahiga because you have stood with the families throughout this time of agony. They have never felt lonely, they have never felt alone, they have found care, they have found a shoulder to lean on. All of us in our own ways, we have supported them, even those who are far. I remind them, as I did on that day, the late John Kariara, Jonathan Carriera's poem, Grass Will Grow. The poem talks about death, losing a shout. And Carriera prays, if my shout would die, give me strength to dig his grief. He's talking about a son. Possibly he had lost a son. And he has sons. So Carriera says, if you should take my shout, Lord, give me strength to dig his grave, set a little rain for grass will grow. Life continues after that. He also talks about a fire, that, like the one that lays the school down, the dormitory. He says, 
if my house should burn, Lord, so that the ashes sting the nostrils, making the eyes weep. Then Lord said a little rain, for glass will grow, meaning life continues. But in his final stanza, he, he praised God not to send him madness. When all those things have happened, may God spare your minds, parents, so that you remain sane, so that you remain alert, so that you are not overwhelmed by death and fire. That is the prayer that Kariara offered, that do not send me madness. Spare my mind. Even though I have lost a child, even though I have lost property, spare my mind. And that is the prayer we are offering to you. Two readings were led to us very clearly from the book of Prophet Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 6 through 13, and then from the Gospel as recorded by St. Luke, chapter 7, verse 18 through 23. And we are going to reflect briefly on those scripture so that may God may, may, God may give us the strength to continue. We are happy that the school will reopen soon so that the continuing pupils, the learners, can also continue with their studies. And we pray that there will be no trauma for those returning to school. The school has existed many years before without a fire. Therefore, that was an incident, painful as it is. So we pray that the school will reopen so that the learners can go on and that we can put the matter behind us. We are glad the government is supporting that, particularly this being a third term when exams will take place, we wouldn't want our children to lose any valuable time that should be in school. Let us pray to hear the counsel of God. Master, speak. We, your servants, are listening. You are a gracious God, a God who is timely. And therefore, you know what is appropriate at this time. We release ourselves unto you, and we look up to you to comfort us through your counsel, our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. John the Baptist was in prison because he had offended the authorities of the time. And aware that he was innocent, he was maybe wondering what Jesus was doing about his imprisonment. And it appears like he sent his disciples to Jesus to provoke him. Here I am, John the Baptist, in prison. You are Jesus. I know you. I baptized you. How are you dealing with my imprisonment? It appears like that's why John the Baptist sent his disciples to Jesus and asked him, are you the one or should we wait? For another one. I don't think John the Baptist didn't know Jesus because he had baptized him. When he had seen him, seen him coming towards the place of baptism, he had proclaimed to the people, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of humanity. Therefore, it occurred into that in a very short time he had forgotten who Jesus was. But to his tuition. He was in prison, and death was beckoning. Would Jesus... When the question is posed to Jesus by the disciples of John the Baptist, who is in prison, Jesus didn't respond to say who he is. Well, if it was you and me, we would have given the disciples our business cards to go and tell Jesus, read the business card. That it is very clear who I am. But Jesus did nothing of that sort. Instead, he performed a number of miracles. He healed the sick, laid hard on the, on the lame, exorcised demons. And then he told the disciples of John the Baptist, go and tell your master what you have seen. So it was a roundabout way of Jesus saying, I am able to do more than I have done today. I can even attend to the man in prison. I am aware he is in prison. I know what is ahead. Look 
at what I've been able to do. I have done bigger things than what he is going through. I guess that's what Jesus wanted to communicate. In other words, all our situations, God can attend to them. But he doesn't attend them according to our wishes. He attends to them according to his plans, to his grace. And that's why in our first reading, it is clear God is saying, are not your thoughts. My ways are your ways. So by Jesus at performing the miracles he did, and I'm not just aware, I'm also able to deal with your imprisonment. If the sick can get well, I think those are bigger things than getting out of prison. But John the Baptist never left prison. Jesus never intervened for him to be released from prison. Because his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not may befall us. We must surrender to God. bigger than our plans. His thoughts are bigger than our thoughts. And therefore we cannot limit him. God was not helpless when the fire took place. But because of his own ways, he allowed it to happen. Of course, sometimes the ways of God do not make sense to us. But we are human. Why should they make sense to us, yet we are not God? Much as we are created in his image and likeness, we are not gods. We are not even small gods. We are dust and ashes, smoke. Therefore, we cannot understand God. And that's why his ways do not make sense. Even in the and wonder why God is not taking that Elijah. But now, Queen Jezebel has taken a vow and said, and now here I am, a fugitive, that he might die. And he told God, I have... That's a resignation. I have had enough Lord. Take my life to work for you. My ancestors who were there, they suffered their own ways. I'm also now suffering like this. drink and thereafter he goes back he is forced to go back to retrace his steps back to where he had led away from and many good things happened thereafter many good things are going to happen to these families in spite of the losses before us glass will grow because at that moment when Elijah fell God whispered to him, and I'm sure parents, God is whispering. That moment when Elijah was in the cave, God did not shout at him. At times when we are in pain, God does not shout at us. And here I shout. He whispers to you. God is whispering to you, parents. Listen keenly in your moments of meditation, in your moments of loneliness. As he spoke to Elijah speaking through a still small voice counting losses the whisper God is speaking as he spoke to Elijah more good things await you parents after this long I have no hatred because of your sins if not to listen to anyone telling you these things have happened because of some, some wizards and wish doctors. They may be in big business now. Because this is a time when you are very vulnerable as parents. They might have relocated to Kenya. 
Area MP help us to identify them. The witch doctors, the wizards who have come all over here to open business because they know that these parents are very vulnerable. And they will tell you why it happened. It is because you didn't pay dowry in full. It's because of, of a lady you were to marry and you, and you didn't marry. That's why your child has died. All manner of prescriptions will be offered. But all that is rubbish. Because people of God have suffered. People who are close to God have suffered. In fact, God himself has suffered. Because you remember when Apostle, uh, Paul, before he became an apostle, was headed to Damascus. When God confronted him, he told him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Meaning, although he was persecuting people, it was God who was feeling the pain. So God has also suffered. Because the Lord told him, why do you persecute me? Remember, Christ on the cross, the gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 15, verse 34. Christ is on the cross and he is saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabakithani. When you hear someone speak their mother tongue, they are in trouble. I can speak. I get into trouble, I will speak the first language of my parents. So Jesus is speaking in his mother tongue. That is how it is recorded. Eloi, Eloi, Lama Zabakithani. Translated, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? So God has also suffered. So suffering is not reserved for sinners. Of course they have their share, which is agonizing, which is painful, because they have nobody to cry to when they sin. When a sinner suffers, they have no records. They have nobody to turn to. At least Jesus could turn to the Father. And all my Father, my Father, why have you forsaken me? And because God was with him, eventually he says, to you I have committed my spirit. So he was not alone. So the fact that God has also suffered should comfort our parents here that their loss is felt by God. Let us not try to understand why it happened. It may take a long time. There are many things that have happened that we have never known the cause. We may never know the cause or not know the cause. It doesn't matter now. What matters is you get to the root of it. But we are also aware there are many stones that government has never turned. You to turn stones. Although revelations are made how some people died in this country. J.M. Kariuki, Robert Ouko. We have never been fully officially informed how it happened. Of course, some in investigations have been done privately, and we almost know who did it. But you dare not say it, you might be sued. You know, there was a bookshop in Nairobi one time. Was it called Book Point? That sold a book that pointed a finger at someone that he had been involved in some death. The book talked about someone who is dead today, that he had involved in the death of some prominent people. And that person took the publisher, the author, and the bookshop to court. And they were sued, and they were fined. And that book, good bookshop folded up. It had no more money after paying those fines. So we never say who did it, much as private investigators say it, because you may be in trouble. I haven't mentioned anybody. <laughs> Although there would be better closure if they knew what happened. But to these people is telling you, I will walk with you. I will not desert you. Grass will grow. I'm your friend. 
I am Emmanuel, meaning God with us. When I can you are, God is with you, proprietor of the school. May he comfort you, may he console you and your family. All parents, mothers and fathers, those who had only one child, the only one they had. Some had children who had been born after a long wait by the mothers and the fathers. They are here in the caskets. Shattered dreams. Great loss. But God is whispering, listen, Kimre, he is whispering to you that you will not go down. And therefore, after crying, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabakithani, you will be able to say unto you, I commit my spirit. I wait upon you. Why it happened? His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. We are limited. We may not know. We may talk about what should have been done and uh, many other things. But as people of God, we are glad to surrender these parents to the Lord and the whole matter to the Lord. We are glad to surrender it because he has never disappointed even in spite of that pain. After the crucifixion of Jesus, the family was consoled because you remember Jesus saying, Mother, these are your children. Son, that is your mother. Even when I went into war. But later on again, he rose from the dead. It has been painful to God. As I conclude, remember Job. He who suffered not because he was a sinner. He suffered great loss. He lost all of it. Then he lost his health. We say health is wealth. He lost it. And then he lost friends. Because those men who came to sit with him, initially they were quiet, but when they started speaking, they condemned him. That such suffering will never come to a righteous man. The kind of suffering you have gone through, parents, never comes to a righteous man. Those were the words of the friends. And Job, Job was wondering, what is, this of, what is this offense that I have committed bigger than those committed by others? But the friends were telling him, look how stubborn you are. Even when we have identified your problem, you are still arguing. You are still saying, you are putting a lot of words in your mouth. This is nothing but a consequence of sin. So he lost his friends. Because they were not agreeing. Point, pray, wish to be a widow. She told the husband, cast God together thereafter, happily ever after. But now Job, even before God intervened, if you read chapter 42, Nisome hapa kwa kiswahiri, hata kapla mungu hajasuruhisha mamba ya ayubu, ayubu mwenyewe alimusikiza mungu wa kiongea, akasikia ale mungu ameweza kusama kufanya, because katika kitabu hisho, kuna wakati mungu anaezea uwezo wake. Haja guza mambo ya ayubu, lakini anabia ayubu, unajua yule mnyama mkubwa sana, yule anaishi kule, unajua ole wanaishi majini, unaona yale mawibi ya bahari, I'm in control of all those things. In other words, he is telling Job, what you have gone through is nothing compared to my ability. The same way John, uh, Jesus was showing John the Baptist, what you have gone through is nothing compared to what I'm able to. Nae mungu akamwelezea ayubu yare abayo, anaweza kufanya. Ayubu alipoelezewa akakubujwa uwezo wa mungu, he felt very ashamed. In, katika mstari wa tano, wa sura ya robaina bili ya kitabu hisho ayubu anasema masikio yangu yalikuwa ya mesikia habari zako lakini sasa kutoka na vile umeerezea masho yangu ya mekuona 
Kwa hivyo najidharau mwenyewe na kutubu katika mavubi na majivu. This man has not been sorted yet. He is still without children, he is still without livestock, he is still without friends. I don't know at what point the wife came back. But in that situation when he sent to God, akasema beleni nilikuwa nimekusikia, sasa nimekuona. Na kwa hivyo najidharau mwenyewe na kutubu katika mavubi na majivu. That is the lowest a Jew could feel sorry. So parents, once again, friends, relatives, God can do more in your lives and he will do more. He will attend to you. God has suffered. He knows what suffering is. God has undergone pain. He knows what pain is. May he help you to get better. Don't get stuck. Mourn. It's human. But don't get stuck there. Get to the next phase that God is ushering you into. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us of your abilities upon us. Your thoughts are not our thoughts. Your ways are not our ways. Omnipotent. We release ourselves to you. And I, like Job, we want to repent. Where we have spoken and kind words to you. Where we have cried. Where were you on that day? Kwa mavobi na majib. Tunatubu. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.